Praise the Lord. I had clapping like I had in the village many years ago. There's a way the villagers clap and you can tell that's a village. And when you come to a city, you can tell that city clapping. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Thank you, choir. Hope for dry bones, although I'm talking on power belongeth unto God. But you know, they go together. Whether you're talking of dry bones coming out of the valley, resurrection power. And then you're talking about power belongeth unto God. Power is power. Heavenly power, illimitable power, irresistible power, and the kind of power that will roll away every mountain tonight in Jesus' name. If you are, you know, if you are sleeping, wake up because you know something is happening tonight. You know, something comes on you and strikes you like an explosion. You say, Where is that coming from? It's coming from the throne of glory. You want to stand up and present yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, something today, something today. I want something to happen to me. Understanding of the word of God that brings this great power into your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight because we know you are a mighty God. Irresistible God, mighty, powerful God. And we pray tonight you manifest your power in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, all the dry bones will come alive in Jesus' name. Those who are sick, you heal them in Jesus' name. The oppressed and the afflicted, oh Lord, I pray that your delivering power will come to them and you deliver everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that your mighty hand will be upon everyone that will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself tonight and touch every life and heal every sickness and deliver every oppressed person. Lord, we're looking for incredible, impossible things to be done tonight in every life. Revive your people, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're looking at Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I had this, the power belongeth unto God. And you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you need to understand the language of the Bible. It says once and then it says twice. We use that in our own language. We say, so we say once and again. Once and again. That means I had that before. I had that again. That means I had that repeatedly. Once and again I have heard the power belongeth unto God. By the way, when you look at this at the beginning of uh, the psalm, it says it says a psalm of David. And if you were to ask David, how have you heard, have you known once and again the power belongeth unto God? It'll take you chapter after chapter in 1 Samuel. Power belongeth unto God. Didn't I face Goliath? Power belongeth unto God. Didn't Absalom rise up to take the throne away from me? It was like everything was finished. But I can tell you, power belongeth unto God. As you look at all the chapters of the life of David, he's telling you that it was a because of the power of God, he was still alive now. But I'm going to go beyond David. Because it says once and again. It means over and over. This is what I've heard. Once and again, this is what I've heard. Repeatedly, this is what I've heard in the past, in the present, in the future. This is what you keep on hearing. Power belongeth unto God. I call on Adam. I said, Adam, tell me, what can you tell? As we count all these things that were created out of nothing, it says the whole conclusion is power belongeth unto God. I say, Enoch, come along here and tell me something. That in all that corruption around him, this man lived a pure life, a transparent life, a rapturable life. And I say, you know, what can you say about what God has done in your life and through your life? He says, power belongeth unto God. I say, get out of it. Noah, can you tell me something? How can you tell about God? He said, he says, Pastor, do you understand this? That you look at all the world, there was no drop of rain, and there was no dew, and God said, I was going to bring grain that will flood the whole earth, and he told me to build the ark. 120 years I kept on building, and people were saying, do you think this will ever happen? You think about it. It's not natural. It's not historical. It's not biological. It's not, it's not scientific. That something like this will happen. He says, I don't know about that. He told me to build the ark. One day, 
the rain began to fall. And then it flooded the whole place. And then God to all the mountain. Everything was totally finished. And then Noah came out of the ark. By the time I was coming out of the ark, I said, Noah, can you tell me something? He said, the only thing I can tell you is tell me out loud. Power belongs unto God. And now I come to Abimelech. I say, Abimelech, I'm, I'm just going around interviewing people that I can meet. That, you know, what can you tell me about the God of Abraham? And then he says, you know what? I thought I was going to take his wife. And I actually took his wife. And, you know, everything came to stand still. Once Sarah came to my house, everybody became barren. And then God told me the night, he said, I'll kill you. One moment, I finish you. He said, don't kill me, God. I did this in the city of my hand. And then he got up in the morning and then said, Abraham, what? why have you done this? I thought the fellow was your sister. I would have taken her to be my wife. And then eventually, you know, returned the wife. And then God opened the womb of everybody. Abraham prayed. Everybody was still instantaneously like you're going to be healed tonight. And then when Abimelech came out of that, I said, Abimelech, before I go, tell me something I can tell the people when I'm preaching. It says, go tell them power belongs unto God. I come now to Pharaoh. I said, Pharaoh, now we need to talk. And you know, this was, if you knew Egypt at that time, Egypt was at the apex of power. It, it's like, you know, when you, when you talk about Egypt, talk about science, talk, talk about architecture, talk about a building, talk about any, they built the pyramid. Have you not read about it? They were great in knowledge. And Pharaoh was actually a god to his own people. And once he said this, that was all. If he said, throw all those children in the river, they were all dead. If he said, don't allow them to live, nobody will live. He was a god. And then somebody came and he said, it's coming from one wilderness somewhere backside of the desert. He saw a burning bush that will not be consumed. And then he said, Pharaoh, I have an announcement for you. Let my people go. He said, who said that? Who told you? Who sent you? He said, God. He said, which, which other God? I am God over here. Any other God, any other place, I don't know that God. Get out of my way. He increased the trouble of the people. And then the people said, look at what you have done. Moses said, don't wait. Just wait. You'll, you'll tell me the sentence after. And then eventually the frogs came and water became blood and the flies came and everything. Pharaoh called and said, well, go, but don't go too far and don't go with all your women and Moses said not a hoof we're going to leave behind I'm telling you tonight not a hoof we're going to leave behind because God is going to touch everyone in Jesus name and then God said Moses wait for him he'll drive you out and when you go out you're not going to go out with pennies and whatever and nickels you're going to go out with all the substance of Egypt and then eventually all that night all the firstborn there's no exception. In Egypt, everyone died. They woke up like this. Pharaoh lost somebody. That one lost somebody. Servant lost some cattle. Lost somebody. And then they woke up. They said, Moses, come. You can go. We're not going to go like that. We'll be serving you for centuries. Give all your money. They put all the money in their hand. And then they left. After they left, you ask an Egyptian, go around now. Go and interview them. Go to Cairo and interview them. What do you say? They say, power belongs unto God. And uh, Pharaoh was just waking up. I, does really power belong unto God? Okay, those people, I'll bring them back. How do you lose your servants and your slaves just like that? And then went after them, and uh, they were by the Red Sea. Look at the Red Sea in front. Look at the mountains on the sides. And look at, uh, you know, the Egyptian army at the back. And the Egyptian, Israel cried unto the Lord. When they cried, and the Lord said, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All those people walking about tonight, I'm telling you, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Your mind is there, your mind is there, your mind is over there, you carry an x-ray in your hand, you say, Pastor, look at what they give me, I say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. They say that this is what happens in our family, and this, I said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then Moses began to pray. And God said, Moses, why are you praying? You pray too much. You know, sometimes I hear a preacher, pray, pray, pray. You know, sometimes you stop praying and start acting. I said, you stop praying and start acting. 
He says, what's that in your hand? He said, it's only a rod. That's the rod. Stretch it out. Stretching that rod, the Red Sea divided into two. Wait a minute. And then three million people, want, they didn't even rush. They just walked majestically like the children of the king. They walked over. And then Pharaoh said, we can do that too. What an Israelite can do, an Egyptian can do. You know, that's what they said. They, pardon me, I'm going to use the feminists in this country. They say, what a man can do, a woman can do. Well, be careful of the language of Pharaoh. What uh, Israelites can do, Egyptians too can do. And then they walked over. When they got to the middle, all the wheels of their chariots, everything came off. Then they began to drive. And then they began to say, God is fighting against the Egyptians because of the Israelites. Now, by the way, all the Israelites were now on this side and the enemies were in the middle of the sea. And God said, stretch back your rod. He stretched back the rod. Everything came back like that. Just swallowed them of all the chariots. The whole army of Egypt destroyed in a moment of time. And then I go now to this other side while Miriam collected all the women. They were singing and dancing and then Moses also rejoicing with Aaron say didn't I tell you I said Moses can you give me a word I want to talk to the people about a message tonight he said go tell them what, what am I telling you power belongs unto God now they were now they've come across all that and everybody now needed what how many of us there one two three not up to three thousand but I'm talking of three million people they were hungry and which uh, water corporation are we going to get to get water for these people they're all thirsty and they will die of thirst and God said Moses stand before that dry rock Lord we're not looking for minerals or gold or whatever we're looking for what I said stand before the rock and then let all the elders see you and they saw him stretch up that rod and strike it what came out water and then the people drank they said i never drank water like this before this is miracle water everybody say miracle water and then after they drank and they were now they was refreshed and settled i said what do you say about this act that has happened now what did they say they said power belongs unto god i'm now in babylon you know every way whether you are in egypt or the red sea in the wilderness or you are around jericho or you anywhere you are israel or judah or you know may babylon now power belongs unto god a shadrach meshach and abednego and this nebuchadnezzar said anybody when you hear that sound of the cornet and the dulcimer and all the sounds of music, everybody you fall down and worship. If you don't fall down, worship that same hour. I'm going to pick you up and throw you into the fire. And then Nebuchadnezzar heard that there were some people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will not bench, they will not bow. You know, those uh, people, those uh, you starchy people, they have iron for their backbone, deeper life people. You know, deeper life has been on, it started in 1973, but actually, our, you know, forefathers who are there, they were also deeper. I mean, I said they were also deeper. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, they were, you, if they were around, if we were around at that time, we called them deeper life. Everybody say deeper life. Deeper life. And so eventually, they got, the people, they were not bulge, they were not compromised, they were not bent for anything. They don't know that this is Babylon. When you are in Rome, do as the Romans do. And when you are in Babylon, do as the Babylonians do. But, you know, deeper life, they are totally different. They say, no, we are deeper. Are they there? Where are they? Amen. Amen. You know, you'll see incredible things. Things that you never saw before. You'll see them in Jesus' name. And then he called and said, I, I heard about you. I heard about you. Everybody is doing it. Everybody is bending, bowing down. And I heard that you are rigid and starchy and you are stubborn. Now, don't do that. I'll give you another. They said, don't waste your breath. Don't waste whatever it is. We are not going to bow down because our God is able. And I say tonight, our God is able. And that man became furious and angry and he said heat that furnace seven times hotter and i say you know sometimes uh, anger is a short madness when you are angry you are not reasonable because you see if you want people to suffer you don't hit the fire seven times hotter you turn low you turn the heat low so they can suffer so it will take them a long time to burn 
But the man, he wanted to punish them. He forgot the purpose of throwing them into the fire. And so he heated the thing seven times uh, hotter. And then all the people that threw them into the fire, the, the number one thing is that their fire burnt them. Their fire killed them. That's what I'm saying. The fire of the world will not kill me. The fire of the world will kill the world, but it will not kill me because that's, that's what I read in the Bible. And eventually they took them up and they bound them up and threw them into the fire. The first thing that burnt all the robes and the property of uh, Babylon around them, everything burnt up. Maybe you are not here in the morning. What I was doing in the morning, I wanted everything of those Babylonian courts that, that bound you to burn up so that the original will remain in your life in Jesus' name. And then, you know, sometimes uh, we don't turn, uh, they, they rose up and they were just walking. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, nobody will kind of disagree with me anymore because I, I, threw, I had to do that. I'm sorry, I had to do that. And then he wanted to look into the, into the furnace and see their ashes. And then, lo and behold, I've never seen something like this before. You are here tonight, you've never seen something like this before. And then he said, what am I seeing? One two, three, four. He said, uh, people, didn't we throw three people into the fire? They said, yes, but come and see. Am I? Four, three, two, one. Looks like, and the, the fourth one is like unto the Son of God. And then he says, servants of the Mosai, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out here. And he said, they say, well, sorry, Jesus, this man is calling us. We thought you'd just take us to heaven from here. You'll do for us like Enoch, like Elijah, but bye-bye, we will see you later. But now that we'll see, we'll, we'll not miss that heaven. I said, we're not going to miss that heaven. And then they came out, and they came out, is they examined them. There was no smell of fire, no, nothing at all on them. And I'm saying, by the time you come out of this convention, there is no smell of fire in your life in Jesus' name. And then he made a decree. And then I said, it's good to make a decree. But can you tell me something? Because I want to go and preach here tonight. Can you tell me something, Nebuchadnezzar? He said, go tell them, go tell them, go tell them. Power belongs unto God. You see, but he didn't learn the lesson fully. It was now in chapter 4 of Daniel that he himself, he was looking around Babylon. He said, this is great Babylon that are built by the strength of my power. The moment he said that, a voice came from heaven. Remember, this was the emperor. This was the greatest man in the land. The greatest man on earth at that time. He became an animal. Began to eat grass. Several years passed over him. He did not sleep on the normal bed. He was walking about like an animal. And then his senses came back after, after seven years. And then he said, I extol God. I glorify God. And the only thing I can tell you, he that walketh in pride, this God is able to abase. And I say, Nebuchadnezzar, say that in another way. He says, power belongeth unto God. The point is, as you go from the beginning of the Old Testament to the end of the Old Testament, the thing you are going to find, that's why David said once and again, I had this once, I'm hearing for the second time, I'm hearing over and over again, that power belongs unto God. And then you come to Matthew, and you know, it's now the power of God just floods the whole place, and the people that saw Jesus, they were healed. Blind eyes open, deaf ears open, the dead child was raised up, and then by the time Jesus Christ was living, they said, he carries the power of God. Power belongs unto God. Come to the Acts of the Apostles. What do you find? What you find is, as Peter was walking like this, a shadow coming upon people, they were being healed. And everybody was saying, power belongs unto God. And here is the great enemy and persecutor of the whole church, that is Saul of Tarsus. He was going like this, and it's like, you know, I'm going to deal with these people today, and I'm going to finish the whole church on the way to Damascus. As he was going, then something happened. A light came from heaven. As this light came from heaven, he fell down. When he fell down, then he got up like this. He couldn't see anything anymore, because that simple that opens the eyes of the blind can also make the person that is seen to become blind. When he got up like that, couldn't see anybody, and they, drew, they got him to... Uh, this Damascus, and then by the time he was just praying, and as he was praying, then Anas came and said, Saul, can you tell me something? He said, this is what I can tell you. Tell me out loud. 
how the longest also he became one of the greatest apostles that ever lived because power belongeth unto God. And then you come to Revelation now. As you come to Revelation and see all those veils being opened. And then you saw the two witnesses coming from heaven. And then it appears that they died. And they were lying down there. He bowed three and they had this all of his sudden power came from heaven. And then those people got up and the whole world saw them. And then they go into heaven. And then the people of the world, they said, there's only one conclusion you can make. You are coming from Genesis. You are going to Revelation. And the same conclusion is this. What that conclusion that power belongs unto God. If that is so, for the men, for the women, for the children of days gone by, and for every book of the Bible, the power belongs unto God, what are we waiting for? It means that today, to you, tonight, that God is still alive. And he says, I am God, I change not. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why I come to announce to you tonight the power belongeth. Come, come back to this. We're looking at Psalm 62, and we're looking at verse 11. It says, God has spoken once. God has spoken once. What does that mean? That God communicates his power by the spoken word. You come to Genesis chapter 1 and he spoke and when he spoke once, let there be and there was. It is that spoken word that brought the power. And then when Moses came, how did he manifest the power? By the spoken word. When Elijah came, how did he manifest the power? By the spoken word. Elisha came, how did he manifest the power? By the spoken word. And then the centurion came. When the centurion came and he said, my servant is lying sick of the palsy. Come and help. And then Jesus said, I'll come home with you and the man said you don't have to come at all speak the word only and my servant shall be healed i'm saying this power that belonged to god it operates by the spoken word and tonight i speak that word into your life and while the word comes to you you'll not be waiting it will touch me you know sometimes as you look at all these religions now and all these charismatic assemblies and you look at all these churches they have to push you down before you got something you know, I think if uh, you, because uh, the Bible says that he healed them all. And if he has to be pushing everybody down, it, that will take a long time. Even for the few of us who are here tonight, for me to come and push you down before you get something. You know, you have any kind of push you down, you knock your head on the, on the floor. And then you have another kind of problem now. We have to put some bandage around your head. There's no pushing tonight. I said there's no pushing tonight. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And it is that spoken word that comes to your life. And when that spoken word comes to your life, things will never be the same again in Jesus' name. God has spoken once, and twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Is that power we're talking about tonight? But it's not just a flowing in the air. It's going to touch your life. It's going to transform your life. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Number one is the immeasurable power of God. Immeasurable, immeasurable. And that's something you cannot measure. And it's incomprehensible to, it's infinite. That it goes beyond your estimation. It goes beyond your measuring. It goes beyond what you can size up. It goes beyond what you can bottle up, the immeasurable power of God. God. How do we see that? That measurable power of God. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading here from verse 26 telling us how immeasurable, incredible, infinite the power of the Lord is. And when you think about your problems, sometimes what hinders people is that they're thinking about their problems. And they measure their problems with scientific power, scientific knowledge, and historical knowledge, and historical experiences. If you look at the problem I have, and look at what happened in the past, and because of that kind of natural comparison, because of that or worldly comparison, historical comparison, they are not able to believe the Lord. But when you compare your problem with the power of God, and say, see the problem I have, and see the power of God. The power of God is immeasurable. And because it's immeasurable, then I know that this is my problem. Everything is going tonight. I said everything is going tonight. 
the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. And look at this. We're looking at uh, chapter 40 of Isaiah, reading from verse 26. It says, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who has created these things. You understand that the world in which we live, as you see the globe, and you see the universe, you see all the galaxies, and even things you cannot see naturally, that you have to look at the microscope to be able to see them. Everything was created by the power of God. The creation of God, the ability of God to create everything shows that this power of God is immeasurable without any limit. It goes on to say in verse 28, as thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, that's the kind of God we're dealing with tonight, the everlasting God. is not a God that, you know, walked yesterday and cannot walk today and cannot walk tomorrow. This is the God that ever lives, is the everlasting God. It says the Lord and the creator of the ends of the earth. He said, he fainteth not and tonight he will not fit. You know, there's no problem that looks impossible to him, that looks, you know, we cannot handle this, we cannot handle that, because look at the magnitude of the problem, but look at the magnitude and the might of the God we're dealing with. It says, he fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding, immeasurable. There is no measure, there is, there is no measure of his, of his uh, power and of his glory. Then it says, he giveth power to the faint. Are you faint tonight? He gives you power. I said he gives you power. But again, remember, it's by the spoken word. As the word is coming your way and the word is spoken to you now, that power will operate in your life in Jesus' name. And you know, sometimes people come like this and when they hear the spoken word, they say, I'm still looking for the chance. I'm waiting for the chance to see the, you know, Jesus. Because if I can just see him and then sometimes, you know, sometimes even at the airport, people, they bend down like, they say, touch my head, touch my head. I said, but what? for. They said, I need a blessing. The blessing also comes through the spoken word. And when I say you are blessed, you are blessed in Jesus' name. In fact, you know, sometimes Peter did not need to touch anybody. Just walk like that and you come under his shadow. All those problems are gone in Jesus' name. Barrenness gone in Jesus' name. And all the sicknesses, they are gone in Jesus' name. And sometimes it's just like, you know, sometimes Paul will forget his handkerchief somewhere on the chair. And then, you know, somebody sees the handkerchief. Oh, Paul forgot his handkerchief there. Let me take the handkerchief. And while you take the handkerchief to Paul, you know, be between that place and the place where you are, the sickness is gone. Because, you know, it's not like people think, you know, you have to do this and do this and do that before something happens. Something is happening already. And by the time we finish tonight, you'll find, where is my sickness? I can't find my sickness. And where is all the oppression? I can't find the oppression anymore. Where is the barrenness? Everything is gone in Jesus' name. And then by the time you come uh, next year, you say, you know, when I came in uh, 2013, there was no child and we've been married for, is it nine and a half years now? And now look at the new baby, miracle child has come in Jesus' name. Because it comes by the spoken word. That's why it's, it gives a power to the faith. And then to them that have no mind, it increases strength. They have no mind, but it increases their strength. It is the almighty God. Some people say the age of miracle is gone. The age of miracle is past. I say, but has God passed? Because he's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. The same God that says, I am God, I change not. And that power will not change. It will not change at your turn in Jesus' name. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall, shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord. What do you think we're doing here? You left your locations and your cities and where all your work and then you come over here. All these days, what are you doing? We're waiting on the Lord. We're waiting. Some people think you are waiting on the Lord when you, you know, don't do anything and you know you don't eat, you don't drink water, you don't talk to anybody, you don't get up from the bed, you just stay there. You are waiting on the Lord. You don't read the Bible, you don't do anything, just waiting on the Lord. I think we should have better understanding than that. Here am I in the uh, in the um, hotel, uh, sorry, in the restaurant, and uh, you know I, I ordered the the thing I want to take and then there's somebody waiting on me and that person is is that person going over there and folding a hand and staying there and say what are you doing i'm waiting on the pastor there and then i about what he ordered i'm waiting on him i'm the one waiting 
and she is the one to bring this and bring that. If you are really waiting, then you, that's why we're here. We're waiting on the Lord, and what you are waiting for, the Lord will give you. There must be something in your heart when you are coming. There must be a kind of a kind of desire. This is what I want, and the Lord is going to do it for you in Jesus' name. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And then it says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. They shall not be weary. And then it says, they shall walk and they shall not faint. We will not faint in Jesus' name. But it talks about this power of God that is immeasurable, that's able to create everything you can see, even the things that you cannot see. We're looking at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth. It says, behold, this is what I see and this is what I understand. Thou hast made the heaven and the earth. And it says, by thy great power, as you think about the world, the whole globe and the universe and all these galaxies that are immeasurable, and it this this by its great power. It means that it's immeasurable. And because it's immeasurable, it says, by thy stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Because his power is immeasurable. The power that can create, it can create you to become a new creature. Turn your life around. Whosoever be in Christ, a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. It can change your body. It can change your soul, change your heart, change your spirit, change your lifestyle and change everything about you. Because his power is immeasurable. Look at verse 27. Verse 27 brings it up like a question. But it's still saying the same thing. It says, don't you know that God will worship? Don't you know that God will serve him? That this God has such a mighty power that it's illimitable and immeasurable and incomprehensible. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all, all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? This God that can do all things. In your own life, anything too hard? In your own family, anything to your heart? In your spiritual life, anything to your heart? Of course, no, because God has immeasurable power. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. The God that has immeasurable power, unlimited power, and the God that can do all things, all things in our lives, all things in our soul, in our spirit, all things in the church. The God that finds nothing impossible. Isaiah chapter 45, I'm looking at verse 18, and then I'll jump to verse 22. Verse 18, first, it says, For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it and he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. He says, I am the Lord. There's nobody to compare with me. You cannot compare the most powerful person in the world with this mighty God. You cannot compare the most uh, resourceful person in the world with this God. You cannot compare the most experienced person in this world with God. He says, I am God and there is none else. And because this is the God was serving, the God of all impossibilities, that his power is immeasurable. That's why he now says in verse 22, look unto me. Look unto me. You have looked unto men and look at what they are not able to do in your life. But now he says, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Look unto me and be ye saved. He has the power to save. In fact, the Bible says he's mighty to save. You know, there are some people that they say, my sins are too deep. My sins are too great. And my sins overpower me. What can I do? We're serving a God that is mighty to save. And whatever the pollution of your sin, whatever the power of the sin that captures you and has captivated you, the Lord is able to break that power of sin tonight and will break it in Jesus' name. 
And when he makes a change, a transformation, it's a total transformation that you'll say, once I was sinful, but now I am saintly. Because the righteous power of the Lord is able to roll away the power of unrighteousness in your life and the power of sin in your life. He breaks the power of cancel sin and he sets us free and he says, go and sin no more. And the temptations that used to put your back to the world, the temptation that you, any time that temptation came, it was like, I'm finished now. I got a lot in that place, you know. I thought I'll never go back to this again, but it's come again. But this time, things are going to be different. Because this is the God that says, look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth, whatever it is that had been your challenge, had been the evil that controlled your life, the Lord is going to stop everything today. And the Lord is going to take everything away in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. We're looking at this God that is mighty to save. That he rolls all those sins away, the mountains of sin and the multitudes of sin. He rolls everything away by his mighty power. Yes, he heals sicknesses, he delivers and those who are oppressed and afflicted, but he also destroys the power of sin from our lives. Look at this in Isaiah chapter 63, and I'm reading here from verse 1, who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments of, Bo of Bozrah, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness. Tell me the rest of that verse. Mighty to save. Mighty to save. Whatever your sins are, is mighty to save you tonight in Jesus' name. You know, some people, they, they think of, they say, God has forgiven me. There's more than that. There's more than forgiveness. There's transformation. He forgives you on the one hand. He changes your life. On the other hand, he transforms you. If he was able to translate Enoch, transfigure the Lord Jesus Christ, that his body became so bright with light, he's able to also transform life that what you are doing before you say, by the grace of God, the power to live above sin, the Lord has given to me. He'll give it tonight in Jesus' name. I was looking at Psalm 50. 51, Psalm 51, I'm reading here from verse 10, Psalm 51, verse 10, we want to talk about the power of God to create, he created the whole earth, he created the whole universe, he's also able to recreate us, he created man originally, body, soul, and spirit, and he's able to recreate us again, and this is the time of recreation tonight, I said there's recreation tonight, I said there is recreation tonight and the power of God will come and recreate every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at that psalm. I'm, I'm going to read it from verse 1 so you get the whole import of what the psalmist is saying before we come to verse 10. It says, mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out, watch, my transgressions. He was conscious of his sins, of his transgressions. But he said, I'm, I'm looking for now, I'm designing the creation, recreation in my life. A kind of total transformation, turning around in my life. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. You'll see the pollution in him. You'll see the defilement in him. You'll see he felt dirty. He felt guilty. He felt powerless. He felt, it's like, I don't have any power to resist this, but now he wanted a new change, and that new change is going to come upon your life. That you'll be able to say, see how dirty I was and see how clean I am now. Because the power to save and the power to convert and the power to transform is here tonight. And that power will transform your life in Jesus' name. Then it goes on in verse 3, for I acknowledge my transgressions, my, my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear. When thou judges, behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He said, This is not just an external sin, it's right in my bone, it's right in my heart, it's right in my system. It's something I cannot shake myself from, or I cannot uh, kind of free myself from. It's right within me. Then he says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward path, and in the hidden path, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with his. So there's a purging happening tonight. 
There's a cleansing happening tonight. And the Lord will purge and cleanse you in Jesus' name. And then he says, and I shall be clean and wash me and I shall be made whiter than snow. To be as white as snow is even wonderful enough. But now to be whiter than snow, there's nothing God cannot do. I said there's nothing God cannot do. It will so cleanse your life that you'll be able to say the things I used to do, I do no more. The dresses I used to wear, I wear them no more. And the things I used to smoke, I smoke them no more. And the things I used to, you know, used to uh, maybe drug myself, all those hard drugs, your power over them. I do that no more in Jesus' name. Then he goes on to say, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities, all, everything. The Lord is able to blot everything out. That's the power of God we're talking about. It's not just power to take away sickness or power to take away evil spirit. It's power to take away all our sins as well. That he removes everything far away from you as east as the east is far from the west. He'll take them away from you in Jesus' name. That the temptation that used to overpower you, everything will stop in your life in Jesus' name. And then he says in verse 10, now create in me a clean heart, O God. And when God creates that new heart, things are totally different. That's salvation. That's the real thing. That's the very first thing we come to before the Lord. And without that, how can we make heaven? How can we get to heaven? Because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But this new birth, you come to the Lord in repentance. You turn away from all the sin and you turn to the Lord and then a new change, a new transformation comes upon your life. He has created in you a new heart. He will do it in Jesus' name. Renew the right spirit and the right attitude in me. He will do it. I said he will do it. I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 36 and reading from verse 25. See what he said he will do. What he has power to do, ability to do. He will do it in our lives in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 36, I'm reading from verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. You know, when you feel dirty, you feel defiled, you feel condemned, you feel miserable, you feel powerless, you feel maybe there's nothing I can do. Maybe I have to live with this kind of infirmity and sin and iniquity. The Lord says, no, I'm here. I have the power to cleanse and the power to forgive and the power to change your life. And the Lord is able to do that. And tonight, he'll do that in Jesus' name. He says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. All your filthiness and all your idols will I cleanse you. Look at verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart also. Can we stop talking there while the preacher is preaching? Can we stop talking while the preacher is preaching? Thank you very much. A new heart also will I give you. He's able to give us a new heart and change us and turn everything around completely because this is the God of immeasurable power. This is the God of irresistible power. The God that can transform your life and change your life and everything turns around and it says a new heart a new heart a new spirit i give you as well and then it says i will put it within you and i will make i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh that's a stubborn heart that's the one that said what i'm doing is what i'll keep on doing no matter what they preach no matter what they say you can read from genesis revelation revolution i'm still going to keep on doing what i'm doing it says that's a stubborn spirit and that one doesn't get us to heaven. It says that stony heart, stubborn will, I'm going to break it. The Lord will break it in Jesus' name. The best thing God can do for you is to break your stubborn spirit and break your stony heart. As long as that stony heart is there, you are not a Christian. You might be an American, but you are not a Christian. And what God does for us, what God does for us is that he says, I'm the God of all power. And because of the power that I have, I'm going to break that stubborn spirit. That's the good thing. That's the favor of God for us. That he wants to take all that away and he says, I will give you an heart of 
flesh that is submissive, that is controllable, that you can direct because it's a heart of flesh. And then he says in verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you and will cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. We're going to do them in Jesus' name. I come now to Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7. This is the God of all creation, the God of all power, the God that with him nothing shall be impossible. Isaiah chapter 43 and I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah 43 verse 7. It says this even everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him and the Lord will remake us once again, recreate us once again, spirit, soul, and body. He recreate us in Jesus' name. And when He recreates us, we know that this is a new creation by the Lord Himself. And that new creation, you know, see the difference in the life of that individual, the difference in the spirit, in the heart, in the soul of that individual. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, we're reading here from verse 23 and verse 24, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're looking at verse 23 and verse 24. It tells us when he does this new creation, he will do it tonight. Because he created the whole earth. He's able to little you there, whatever is within you. He's able to turn everything around that you'll see. By the grace of God, things are different and things are new now because of this new creation. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created, created, created in righteousness and true holiness. It will come tonight. I said it will come tonight. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Number one is God's immeasurable power. And then number two is the incomprehensible power of God. You can't understand this. You can't search it out and find it out all to the details. It's incomprehensible. And yet, even though it's incomprehensible, it works because we have faith in God. I'm looking at Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 7. Job chapter 11. We're looking at verse 7. Canst thou, canst thou by searching find out God? Incomprehensible. Can you by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? All the details about this mighty God, can you find him out? It says no. It's incomprehensible. When God takes a man and he changes his life and turns him around and he makes a new creature out of the old creature, how can you understand that? You cannot understand Understand. Let's take the case of Saul of Tarsus, for example. There's uh, one man that fell that single-handedly, he was going to destroy the whole church. Can you think of a man that felt this is going to be his full-time job and this is going to be his preoccupation and this is going to be what he woke up in the morning and said, what can I do? I want to destroy this way. I want to destroy this one they call Christianity. And then the Lord took hold of him and something happened to him. That thing will happen to you. It's a total change, a recreation in the life of that a soul of Tarsus. And if God could do that, God can still do that today because he is God and he changes not. Because Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he remains the same and what he did before in turning that man around and changing his life and changing his nature, and he came from a persecutor, became a preacher of the gospel. He was persecuting. That same thing the Lord can do today, he'll do for you in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. I'm reading here from verse 1. And yet Saul breathing out threatenings and, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went on to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed he 
came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Suddenly, suddenly. Everybody says, suddenly. You know, that's right. It happens because you, he surprises us. The Lord will surprise you tonight in Jesus' name. And you know, and there are people that have some impossibilities in their lives. I know what you're thinking of. You know, I'm sick. I find this impossible. I'm, you know, tormented. I find this impossible. That's all right. The Lord will take care of that tonight in Jesus' name. But you know, uh, there was uh, a man in this country. I don't want to mention the country now. I remember it vividly that the wife came to me at the beginning of the program and he said, Pastor, there's just one thing I want. My, my husband is uh, having this high position in the country. In fact, he should have been the you know, director of all that establishment in the whole country. But drunkenness was his problem. And I uh, told him that he should come at this time so that you'll pray for him. And then his life will change. Everything will turn around. I said, thank God when he comes, uh, let me know. First day, the man did not show up. Second day, the wife said, hey, my husband, I about the promise you made. You are going to follow me to this program so that the man of God will pray for you. And the man still will not come. And then the third day, the man will not come. And on the last day, the woman knelt and said, my husband, this is our last day, the last chance. You must come. And he said, but I told you I will come. I will come. Keep going. I know the place. Now, you're not meeting in that particular place and describe the place. <laughs> and so he said, I'm coming. And then the wife came and looking out, she did not even pay attention to what we were doing there. Look, the husband, he was coming. But then he saw a bar on the way and branched there. And, <laughs> you know, he, he got drunk. He was flat out. Then, after he became drunk, he remembered that I was to go to a particular place. And then he stumbled there. I was already counseling. I preached the last message. Everything was totally finished. And now he just stumbled in. And I'm telling you, you know, I don't exaggerate. By the time he came to me like this, I was sitting down. I could, you know, perceive the order. I knew that this man had been somewhere. And then I said, eh, what do you want? He mumbled and said, my wife said I should come. I said, is that so? I said, in the name of Jesus, I break that spirit of drunkenness over your life. And then I said, you can go. And I didn't even, you know, this rig maroon and, uh, you know, stand up and jump and shake and speak in tongues a little and shake your head and shake your body and push the man and shake drunkenness out of him. All that was not saying. I just, in the name of Jesus, I said, you know, go, go and drink no more. And then as I was going, all the alcohol, the smell was irritating to him. And I went back here to that place a year after, and then the man says, since that time, not a drop of alcohol in my mouth. That's the change God can make, and that change the Lord will make in your life in Jesus' name. In another country, I was there, and you know, the, the church was like, like this, uh, near the road. And as it was uh, here, near the road, I was uh, so, you know, the fellow had us uh, clapping and singing, and he said, oh, those people, I won't let me go and scatter them. And anywhere I am, you cannot scatter this one. I said, you cannot scatter this one. It doesn't matter where you go to hold your meeting. Once I'm there, this one cannot be scattered in Jesus' name. You know, some people said, you know, he's preaching and he, he wants holiness and holiness and all that. Were you there in the morning? Yes. I was, did you like what he said? I don't like what he said. We're going to scatter it. <laughs> Look up at me here. Eyeball to eyeball. This one you cannot scatter. You know, Pharaoh thought he had scattered that in, Israel, that in Israel, but he could not. He drowned in the sea. And Saul of Tarsus thought he's going to scatter them, going to Damascus. By the time he got there, he was blindfolded. And I'm saying that, you know, while I'm here, you know, I have a commission from the Lord. I have an anointing upon me. And instead, of be very careful, otherwise, he will scatter your life. And so, uh, so the, the man said, I'm going there to scatter them. And then he entered in. And this man had real evil spirit. I'm talking of a country where they send people to go and study witchcraft. It's not, it's not something they even, they even take people to court because of witchcraft. They say, he bewitched me. And the judge will judge them. It's a very serious thing. I've been there a number of times. And then as I was there, I was preaching. And after the prayer, I gave an altar. I said, you're giving your life to Jesus. Come out here. And the man did not know when he stood up. And then he came to the front. I said, bow your head and close your eyes. The man said later, we never close our eyes for anybody. Because anywhere they got to, they were the Lord. They were the people in charge. They took over the place anywhere they went. But when I'm in a place, I'm in charge. I said I'm in charge. 
And I said, close your eyes. And he closed his eyes. And then I prayed. After the prayer, he gave his life to the Lord. But he didn't know what had happened. He, he had a tiger that was by his side every time before that time. And anywhere he wanted to cause trouble, he said, tiger, go. you will not see. It's an invisible tiger, but he will see the tiger. He'll say, go and scatter them. You'll just find people running elter skelter. And then after the prayer, he looked around. He couldn't find tiger. He said, my tiger, my tiger, my tiger, where are you? And the tiger had vanished completely forever. And I'm saying that today something is going to happen to your life in Jesus' name. You know, because there is a power, a power that comes from heaven, and that power, incomprehensible and irresistible, it's infinite. And that power will break every yoke in Jesus' name. And so you find this soul, look at this now, and it fell, verse 4, it fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Soul, soul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. And he trembling and, and, and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Have you ever found Saul like this, asking questions from anybody? What will you have me to do? Something had happened. A new creation are taking place. And that new creation will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Then he goes on to say, And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. We know the rest of the story. How God took that man's life and changed him and turned him around. And it was never the same anymore. And I'm telling you, the moment you enter into this building, you hear this word of God, you'll never be the same anymore in Jesus' name. The things you thought were impossible in your life, if I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, I couldn't do that. It's going to be done in Jesus' name. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. You know, I've been touched that and touched that and touched that. And the Lord is still doing it today. Over the last uh, weekend, you know, we are oh, in Lagos and, you know, some incredible things happening. I know that, you know, sometimes when I come to the U.S. like this, or any hurry, you are expecting to preach a sermonet. You know what a sermonet is? A sermonet is, uh, you know, pamphlet. You know, pamphlet, sermonet, not a real sermon, but, you know, five minutes and you're through. How can you come? to U.S. and preach uh, 30 minutes, one hour. I used to I preach one hour in other places. Here is going to be, you know, there's going to be an extra. I said there's going to be an extra. And even though your AC may not be working, but this is, uh, it doesn't matter. This is, uh, this is not as terrible as hell yet. I think you can endure this heat of uh, no air con so that we, we endure this one and escape the other one. I said we endure this one and escape the other one. Praise the Lord. And so, and let me let me just tell you that you know, over the last weekend, you know, Saturday and Sunday were there, and far away in in the north, in the particular say this ten year old child, I'm so totally helpless, and you know the mother will take the child to the toilet and take the child to you know restroom. They say I'm sorry, that one is British. There's no toilet here. There's only restroom over here, and it will take uh, the child to the you know, and the route you, you you used to get there to you, you think about. That. And then when he gets there, and then will bring the child back. Where you put the child is where the child is. But they brought that child to this Saturday, Sunday meeting last weekend. I think I should come to a weekend sometimes here. And uh, praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. But when I come, we will do it till midnight. We just, you know, brush everything aside and we we'll say, Today is today. And something will happen in your life in Jesus' name. And then eventually that child, uh, you know, after the prayer, I'm saying that you may not know that something has happened, something is happening already. And then eventually after we, we finish, uh, they took the child home, not knowing that anything has happened. And, uh, you know, in the morning, the mother woke up so as to go and take the child and take to the bathroom and take here and there. And lo and behold, was calling the, where are you? The boy got up by himself. All the bones received strength. All the joints received strength. And everything became completely all right. And that is why we're here tonight. Everything will be all right in Jesus' name. The spoken word, the word that comes to you and everything turns around. And look at this, Saul. By the time he got to Damascus, it's not brother Saul. 
persecutor Saul when he was in Jerusalem and then just before he got here, brother Saul, the Lord that appeared to you in the way I sent me to you that you will receive your sight. And tonight, you receive your sight in Jesus' name. Because of the irresistible, incomprehensible power of God that is coming upon your life tonight. And he said, you know, in Galatians chapter chapter 1, look at the testimony of this man. After that power came upon his life. After the new change, the new transformation came upon his life. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 21 afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. And was unknown by faith unto the churches of the of Judea and which were in Christ but this but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the gospel the faith which he once destroyed a new change I said a new change I said a new change and that new change will come upon your life in Jesus name and I want you to notice something in the New Testament when it will say, this is what you were, but now. This is where you were, but now. This is who you were, but now. And look for those two words, but now. But now, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And see this incredible power of the Almighty God. This incomprehensible power of the Almighty God. This irresistible power of the Almighty God. In Romans chapter 6, verse 22. Verse 22, it says, what are the first two words there? But now, it says, but now be made free from sin. That's what he does. But now being made free from sin and become the servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. But now, but now, but now. I, that means that by the time you live here tonight, you'll be able to say, this is what I was. But now things are different. Things are going to be different in your life in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, it talks of what the people were in the past. And then it talks of the change, the transformation that had come upon them. In Ephesians chapter 2, reading here from verse 13. In verse 13, it says, but now in Christ. You see that we're outside Christ before without hope and without God and without the strength to live righteously. But it says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Chapter 5, verse 8. But now, but now, there's going to be a difference. After we finish the meeting tonight, you'll be able to say, Praise the Lord, but now. Praise the Lord, but now. Praise the Lord, but now. Because things are going to change in your life. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. But now, but now. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. Colossians chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 8. Colossians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 8. It says in verse 8, But now ye also put off all these he also put off all this. That means that our lives now is going to be totally different. What are we putting on? Number one, anger. You know, there's some people, they wake up in the morning. Well, that, it's like somebody offended them in a dream. And whoever offended them in the dream, they want to unleash whatever rust they want to unleash in the daytime. I said, what happened to you? We've not spoken today. We've not met before. You know, somebody, sometimes you come to a convention like this and you're coming in and you see somebody for the first time and then the fellow is frowning. I said, what's happening to you? Have we met? And why are you frowning? What, what happened to you that you're angry? Without even any interaction at all, they're angry. And without any, any kind of business between us, they're angry. And that anger the Lord will take away in Jesus' name. You see, somebody is like, you know, you're a passenger. You, you want to get into the plane and the pilot is coming and this is a pilot that will take you from here to there and then you look at the pilot and then you are angry and the pilot says what's the matter with you I'm the pilot look at my uniform he says yes I know but I'm angry at you what's your problem because without that pilot where are you going to be you'll be at a standstill over there when your pastor comes that's your pilot and it's to take you from earth to heaven it will take you from here to glory and there's nothing to be angry about I said there's nothing to be angry about and so it says but now anger is gone but now wrath is gone and malice is gone and blasphemy and feel the condemnation out of your mouth it is done in Jesus name 
And now we come to the final point, the infinite power of God. Infinite power of God. You think about the power of God that is immeasurable, the power of God that is incomprehensible, the power of God that is irresistible, the power of God that is infinite. And because it is infinite, it will do all things in our life in Jesus' name. And this one makes you more than a conqueror. That means you will conquer everything that challenges your life. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. It talks about this in Romans chapter Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read two verses and connect them together, although they are not next to each other. I'm looking at this, verse 32. We're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 32. It says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us how many things? Freely give us how many things? Freely give us how many things? Who are the people God is going to give all things? Us, us. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. He says, and he's going to give it freely unto us. Once you come into the kingdom and you come into this relationship and connection with the Almighty, he says he'll freely give us all things. Salvation is available among all those things. And deliverance is available among all those things. Healing is available among all those things. And everything, every miracle we need available among all those things. And he says he'll freely He'll freely, he'll freely give us all things. He will do it tonight. I said he will do it tonight. And then come now to verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Because of his love for us and his provision for us and his death for us. And because he shared his blood for us. It says, number one, he's going to freely give us all things. Number two, he's going to make us conquerors and more than conquerors. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. And that means that whatever has challenged your life until this moment, you are going to conquer them. Because it's not in your own strength. It's in the strength of the Lord. And while the strength is there, power will work in your life in Jesus' name. Again, let me remind you that, you know, it's not by shaking, it's not by jerking, it's not by all the gymnastics and all that, uh, that uh, all that will happen. You remember the story in the Old Testament, the Philistines, they took the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And they thought, where are we going to put this covenant of the Lord? They thought in their mind that our God is greater than the God of Israel. That's why we're able to take the representation of their God. That's why we're able to take the Ark of the Covenant. And then they put the Ark of the Covenant in uh, the shrine of their idol, that is of Dagon. And then they said, well, because now Dagon is higher than the God of Israel. There was no priest there. There was no high priest there. There was no prophet there. Just the presence of the Ark of the Lord. By the time they got there in the morning, Dagon was falling down. And I'm saying that the presence of Jesus Christ in your life as we invite him in, the presence of Christ there, every deacon will fall down in Jesus' name. And so they had to help Dagon. And I mean, a God you have to help, that's not God. I think it's God that should help us. I said it's God that should help us, but now they had to help their God to stand straight again. And then by the time they came back, the following day, the head was gone, the hands were gone, everything was gone because the ark of the Lord now troubled their God. Not only that, all the boys came on all those people, they said, come and take the ark of God away from here. The presence of the Lord alone in your life is going to demolish every both in your life in Jesus' name. And that's why it says here that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us us just by being present or prominent preeminent in your life it will be done in jesus name i'm looking at first john chapter four first john chapter four and i'm reading from verse four first john chapter four verse four it says here of god little children and i've overcome them i have overcome I said, I have overcome. You, you know, there are people that they say they have overcome. You see, some things we say, look up here for a moment. We say some things just with the mouth, and it doesn't go 
deeper than our throat. I have overcome. I have overcome. It's just, just, just there, superficial. Other people, they go a little bit more. It goes from their head to their mouth. I have overcome, but it's not. That's not enough. It's coming from the depth of your. Heart. You know that you know. You know that you know. As you know that two and two. If, if they wake you up in the night and they say two plus two, you give me the answer. That is four. And they, just like you know that, whether you are just waking up to say where is going to say he lives within me. Christ abides with me. And he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when you know that, like you know that nothing can change that, then something is going to happen in your life. Ye have got little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It tells us in chapter 5, uh, that's, uh, that's in First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. We're going to overcome the world. We overcome the world already in Jesus' name. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Look at verse 18. We know that what whosoever is born of God, tell me, sinneth not. Sinneth not. You don't keep on drinking sin like you're drinking water. Always thirsty of sin. Always thirsty of evil. Always thirsty of iniquity. When we come to the Lord and he lives and abides within us, it says we know, we know, we know this from experience. We know from the power of God resident within us. It says we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. There's a wall of fire around you. And because of that wall of fire, those evil people and evil spirits cannot touch you anymore in Jesus' name. And the Lord tells us that we are more than conquerors. I am more than a conqueror. I said I am more than a conqueror. Remember, you can say that just from the mouth, you can say that from the head, but to say that from the depth of your heart, you are more than a conqueror. It is so in Jesus' name. It tells us, it tells us in First John chapter 3, First John chapter 3, and we're looking at this in verse 8, it says, see that he that committed sin is of the devil, I will not be of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might do what? That he might do what? That he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why I have confidence tonight and I'm saying that every work of the devil here will be destroyed in Jesus' name. Even the one that the devil is still planning, I'll do this. At that planning stage, the Lord will destroy it. And then at the stage of prosecution that now we're ready, we're going to do, if there's a work of the devil, it's going to be destroyed in Jesus' name. And no matter where they are, no matter where they congregate together, where they, where they conspire together, and they try to do that, once they mention your name, the mention of your name will scatter all their instruments in Jesus' name. Because it says, because it says over here that, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now we look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 32. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 32. It tells us what he's able to do and what the Lord will do tonight. He'll do it in your life. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. And uh, we've been talking about God from Genesis to Revelation. I told you that about Pharaoh, about Abraham, about, uh, about uh, Adam, about uh, Enoch, and all of them telling us that we have, we have had this once and we've had it again, that power belongs unto God. And we've seen that the power is immeasurable. We've seen that the power is incomprehensible. We've seen that the power is irresistible and it is infinite. And since we know that truth already, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Tonight I am free. Free from sin. I said free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from evil spirit. We're free and free and free indeed in Jesus name. 
the power of God to set us free and the power of God that's able to set us free, free from every yoke and free from every bondage. That power of God is here tonight and it will work in your life, operate in your life. It will set you free in Jesus' name. And this is not going, just going to be, you know, when I find that Pentecostal people, the reason they say we're Pentecostal is that when we pray, we abandon ourselves to God. But it's not, a, you know, if you go to any Pentecostal, real Pentecostal church, it's not that, you know, we're praying for five minutes and Pentecostal prayer has stopped. The difference between Pentecostal prayer and the other kind of prayer is that we just forget ourselves and we really pray. It's not like, you know, deeper life people, uh, it's only shallow life uh, people that pray and they're looking at the wristwatch. When are they going to release us? Tonight is ready now about uh, this minutes after nine. After nine, you are even lucky I'm stopping the preaching now. Uh, all that I've should have been my introduction. I should have now started my, you know, point number one, number two, and number three. And so fortunate that today, um, you know, because uh, maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll teach you a lesson. And then we'll really preach. I say, we'll really preach. You know, what if I preach and then you are writing and then you cannot write anymore? It's like, you know, what am I going to do now? I'm going to try and test you one day. But now today we're going to pray. And every yoke we're going to break. And all those infirmities, we're going to drive them away in Jesus' name. Talk about sin remaining. Sin will not remain in your life. Are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on now and rise up and, you know, you bombard heaven. Pentecostal praying that you just know that today is that day. Today is that day. No impossibility in your life. No impossibility in your life because we serve a God. With this God, all things are possible. With this God, all things are possible. You bring your heart, your soul, your spirit, your mind, everything you've got. You bring everything to the Lord and you say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. I want to see you do something incredible, impossible in my life. Let him do it. All the sins that have been, you know, getting you down. All the temptations that have been overcoming your life. This is the time to overcome. You must 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 overcome. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. If there's any, don't just talk about sickness now. We'll come to that later. But a total cleansing. A total cleansing. A new creation. All the stubbornness in the spirit, all the sinning that is on and on and over and over, that you have not been able to get victory over, this is the moment. This is the moment for you to be free from all those sins. The lying and the anger and the fighting and the violence and the evil and the hatred and the malice and the worldliness, thinking like the world and talking like the world and going the direction of the world. This is the time the yoke should be broken. The secret sin, the hidden sin. This is the time to expose everything be before the Lord and say, Lord, I'll be a new creature. I'll be a new creature. If any man be in Christ, if any woman be in Christ, she is a new creature. It's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Let all things become new in your life tonight. All things become new in your life tonight. That same God that saved Enoch and sanctified Enoch is able to save you and sanctify you. That same God that was gracious to Noah and he saved him and changed him and made him a righteous man. That same God is able to save you and make you a righteous man. That same God that changed the life and changed the life of Moses and turned him around and was a conqueror the Lord can do it tonight in your life and break all that sin that same God that forgave David and transformed the life of David and made David a new creature that same God can renew you and create you a new spirit even from tonight that things will be totally completely totally different he can do it tonight save me from sin save me from sin save me from sin he's mighty to save he's mighty to save he's mighty to save and for this purpose, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was manifested that he might destroy the very power of that sin and the very power of that temptation in your life is able to do that. He's able to do that. He's able to do that. Let him do it. Let him do it. Confess everything before the Lord and say, Lord, sin will not have victory over me anymore. Sin will not have victory over me anymore. Immorality will not have victory over me anymore. Lying will not have victory over me anymore. Fighting will not have
have victory over me anymore. Anger will not have victory over me anymore. Hypocrisy and deception will not have victory over me anymore. This is the time for you to talk to the Lord. This is the time for you to talk to the Lord. This is the time for you to say, Lord, I want this salvation. 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 Salvation from sin. Salvation from sin, from the power of sin. Salvation from the pollutions of sin. Salvation from the very presence of sin in your life. Let there be let, let that change come. 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 Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of the water of the world and the Holy Ghost, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. What's the use? What will it profit a man? If you gain the whole world, if you have the healing, the deliverance and everything, and then you lose your soul. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? salvation, the kind of salvation that changes your life, the kind of salvation that transforms your life, the kind of salvation that takes that stubbornness away and takes that unrighteousness away and takes that evil away salvation that makes you righteous in the secret and righteous in the public salvation that makes you holy in the public and holy in the private, salvation that makes you righteous in the family and righteous in the church, salvation that actually touches your life and it is not your patching up, it's not that you are pretending this is a real change a mighty change that comes upon your life and the, uh, david said create in me a new heart of god create in me a new heart of god let the lord do it right now in your heart let him turn everything around it says i'll sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your idols and all your filthiness i will cleanse you from all your immorality i will cleanse you from all the things that have been overpowering you i will cleanse you this is the real cleansing conversion a total change, a complete change it will do it in your life give him the chance tonight, his power is immeasurable, his power is irresistible his power is incomprehensible his power is infinite there's nothing he cannot do there's nothing he cannot do, there's nothing he cannot do, look at the measure of his power, look at the measure of his ability, look at the measure of his authority, see what he can do, see what he can do and present your heart and present your soul and present your personality before the Lord and say, Oh Lord, change me. Oh Lord, change me. Oh Lord, change me. Oh Lord, turn me around. Oh Lord, change me and turn me around. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. He will do it in your life. He'll turn everything around. He'll turn everything around. He'll turn everything around. And all those things you are doing before that you are powerless or kind of impotent, it was impossible for you to overcome. You are overcoming from tonight. You are overcoming from tonight. Let it be a moment of a definite change, a moment of a definite transformation, a moment of a definite righteous work of the Lord, miracle of righteousness, a miracle of holiness, miracle of godliness in your life. This is the time. Let him do it. 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 He'll do it in your life so that you'll be able to have the power to go and sin no more. The power to go and sin no more. The power to go and sin no more. You'll be able to have the courage to say no to that sin partner. You'll be able to have the courage and the conviction and the power, the authority to say no to that intruder into your life that you always get your back to the wall. And every time that individual comes, you cannot do anything but succumb, but submit. But this time, victory will come to your life. Victory will come to your life. You'll be able to say no to the devil able to say no to sin, able to say no to temptation, able to say no to all those things that overcame your life in the past. It's happening today, it's happening today. Anger will go, the wrath will go, hatred will go, animosity will go, all the malice, everything will go, and the Lord will flood your heart with a different kind, the fruit of the Spirit, and the love, and the joy, and the peace, and the long-suffering. Things will become totally different. You'll be a new creature in Christ, a new creature in Christ, a new creature in Christ, so know that things have totally changed let it happen let it happen let it happen don't give up let it happen that's why we're here let it happen that the lord himself in his mighty power in his immeasurable power in his irresistible power will change your life and turn everything around you really become a real pentecostal person you become a real deeper life person. It will not just be deeper life in name, deeper life in heart, deeper life in spirit, deeper life in conviction, deeper 
life in victory, deeper life in conviction and triumph. You'll be triumphant. You'll be triumphant in your life. You will know by the grace of God, I gave my life to the Lord on that day. And something definite happened in my life. And I will not be the same anymore. You'll not be the same anymore as you surrender. You surrender, you submit yourself completely unto the Lord. And you're saying, oh Lord, here am I. Do this miracle of transformation. Lord, here am I. This miracle of conversion. Here am I. This miracle of salvation. Do it in my life, O oh Lord, and let things turn around completely in my life. That whether church people are there or church people are not there, you'll be able to live a righteous life in the grace of God, in the strength of the Lord, by the power of the Lord, by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. Everything will totally change. Everything will turn around in your life. You will know by the grace of God, this new life has now come. And this new change has now come. A new creature in Christ. A new creature in Christ. A new creature in Christ that the devil will not be able to get you anymore. Demons will not be able to get you anymore. Tempters and temptresses will not be able to get you anymore. You have a clear cut experience, a definite experience, a no so experience that you know, I know it, I know it, I know it. Something has happened to me and you'll never be the same again. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. If any boy, any girl, if any any woman being Christ, she is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Let all things become new in your life tonight. That same power, let that same power that comes when Christ is present. When Christ is allowed to sit on the throne of your heart, when Christ is in control, let that power come tonight. Let that power come tonight that you will know he is now in charge of my life. He is now in control of my life. He has taken over. He has taken over. I will never be the same again. And things are different now. Something happened to me. Since Christ came in, since Christ came in, he has demolished all the stronghold of sinning. All the strongholds of sinning. He has destroyed everything. Let it happen to you. Let it happen to you. And then you'll be able to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The change has taken place. The change has taken place. Let it happen. Let it happen. That you will know. Believe it in your heart. Believe it in your heart. The presence of Christ brings victory over sin. The power of Christ brings victory over sin and faith in Christ. As you believe the promises of God, he'll make you a new creature. He'll do a new thing in you. He'll, give, he'll put a new spirit within you, a new power, a new understanding. He will put within you and then you will know that things are different now. The things I used to do, I can do them no more. The places I used to go, I can go there no more. The things I used to say, I can say that no more. And the behavior, wrong behavior, bad behavior, Behavior, sinful behavior I used to have I have that no more something happened to me because Christ came in because Christ came in now he reigns within he reigns within he reigns within oh Lord come reign over my character reign over my tongue and reign over my attitude and reign over my relationship reign reign master Jesus reign Savior Jesus and reign over me completely let him reign tonight let him reign tonight let him reign tonight let him rule over you tonight victory victory over sin Victory, victory over temptation. Victory, victory over the tempter. Victory, victory over the temptress. That things will be totally different. Things will totally change. I will not be the man you have been before. You will not be the woman you have been before. You will not be the boy, the girl that you have been before. There is a difference now because of the presence of Christ. There is a difference now because of the presence of Christ. A difference, a difference, a difference, a change. It must happen. Otherwise, it means we don't know God. If we know God, if we know God, if we know God, He'll come and make the change in our lives. He will come. He'll make the change in our lives. Let him, let him reign. Let him rule over your life so that he'll be in charge. He'll be in control and he will totally destroy the works of the devil. He'll totally destroy all those works of sin and all the attitude of sinning. Let him destroy everything. He will. He will, he will, he will believe, believe. Put your very life in the hand of Christ. Put your soul in the hands of Christ. He saith, I'm God, there's none else. I am mighty to save. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved. Let him, let him save you. Let him save you and transform your life. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved because I'm God and there is none else. There is none else. 
there's none else. And then other, others will be able to see. You'll be able to say, once I was blind, but now I can see. Once I was weak, but now I am strong. Once I was sinful, but now I am righteous. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. Accept him. Accept him. Accept that word. Accept that word. Accept that word. Accept that word. Accept that truth right now. The truth of the fact that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and free indeed. If the Son of Man, the Son of God will set you free, you shall be free indeed. If the Son of God will set you free, you shall be free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. You are free your soul and free your spirit and free your body. Free indeed. You are free your life and you are free your character and you are free. Free to obey God. Free to obey God and free to walk in the path of righteousness. Free and free indeed. Let him do it in your life and you'll never be the same again. After you have given your soul to the Lord Jesus Christ, your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and that new change, that transformation has come. Now you give whatever sickness is there, give it to the Lord as well. Whatever oppression is there, give it to the Lord as well. Whatever challenge is there, give it to the Lord as well. Because he says that the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. He gives you life, eternal life. He gives you life, healthy life, a sound life, a kind of strong life that he gives you. He will give you right now. If you will call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here am I, here am I We came to the convention for this So that it's not just for preaching For prayer, for prayer So that as we pray Something in our own heart, in our own spirit In our own personality There will be a total change, a complete change A total transformation A total transformation, a total transformation No sickness will remain there No infirmity will remain there And no attack and affliction Will remain there Because Christ is here present Because Christ Christ is here present and because Christ is able, Christ is able, Christ is able, Christ is able, Christ is able and it will take all those things away from your life, take all those things away from your life, infirmity gone, sickness gone. Affliction gone, all the oppression of the enemy gone, all those things that the devil has done in the past, tormenting your life, tormenting your body, everything gone because now Christ is sitting on the throne. Christ is sitting on the throne. Christ is sitting on the throne because Christ is on the throne. That means that all the Dagon will fall, all the diseases will go, all the sicknesses will go, all the infirmities will go, all the afflictions that are brought in here, everything will vanish away. This is the day of victory, the day of his power, the day of his power. Power belongeth unto God. Power to save, power to heal, power to deliver, and power to supply all our needs. Power belongeth unto God. Power belongeth unto God. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. Let him take all those things away, all the property of the devil, all the harassment of the devil, all the works of the devil. Let him take everything away. He will, he will, he will. The moment immediately you trust him and say, Lord, I trust, I believe, I accept, I know it is done. You'll find it is done. You will find it is done. You will find it is done. It cannot fail. 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 He cannot fail. He will. He will. He will. He cannot fail. He will do it. He cannot fail. He will do it. He will do it. Trust him. It will be unto you according to your faith. Unto you according to your faith. Unto you according to your faith. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And because I believe according to your word which cannot fail, I know it's done.
In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, God is available here and his power is available. Salvation is available. Healing is available. Deliverance is available. Miracles are available. Signs and wonders are available. Through the spoken word, as you hear my voice at this prayer, believe it's done and it's done. Yeah. You'll see a mighty change. And by the time you wake up tomorrow, you'll be testimony already in Jesus' name. Impossibilities are becoming possible now. Mountains are rolling away right now. Whatever you have found impossible before from tonight, the God of all possibilities is working in your life in Jesus' name. Are you going to receive? Where are you? Are you going to receive? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have shown us that power belongs to you. And Lord, we come with that understanding. We come with that faith. You cannot fail. You will not fail. In the life of every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl here, I know you will not fail. And I pray, Lord, right now, touch and transform your people in Jesus' name. You are mighty to save as many as, give, as have given themselves to you wholeheartedly, unreservedly. I pray right now, forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Let there be a mighty change, a mighty transformation. Make them new creatures in Christ in Jesus' name. And the power that lives victoriously. Grant it to everyone in Jesus' name. And now I know that no sickness can stand before you. Any sickness, whatever the name, I call upon you right now. And I command that sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that your word cannot fail. Your word will not fail. And tonight, the power in the word is going forth unto your people. You sent forth your word and you healed everyone. And I pray that their sicknesses will vanish away now in Jesus' name. Whatever swelling, whatever pain, whatever infirmity, whatever it is that you have been carrying about, and you're saying, This is my problem, that's my problem. I speak against that sickness now. I speak against that pain now. I speak against that infirmity now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have been tormented by any evil power, any evil spirit in the day or in the night. Lord, I come against all those evil things right now. Come out of their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, there are those who need signs and wonders in their lives, miracles in their lives. And I pray that those miracles will happen right now. Nobody here will be disappointed. Nobody here will be denied. And I pray that miracle working power of God will touch your life right now. Lord, I pray that you manifest it in Jesus' name. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Miracles. The explosive power of God. Come upon your life right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have been married and they are looking to you for children. I pray this will be the moment. Touch the husband. Touch the wife. By the time we come here and not or any other place uh, next year, Lord, I pray that their miracle baby will be theirs in Jesus' name. Any impossibility in your life, any mountain in your life, I speak against that mountain. I speak against that impossibility. And I pray you receive the miracle working power of God right now in Jesus' name. Go out victorious. Go out triumphant. Go out as an overcomer. Go out as a conqueror. And more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Everything you have desired, everything you have demanded, everything you have asked the Lord in prayer, I pray the Lord confirm it right now. And I pray that out of this convention, you will not go empty-handed. Something definite. Something miraculous. Something spectacular. Something supernatural. The Lord put upon your life right now and change you completely. Be a different man. Be a different woman. And be on top of every situation in your life. Lord, send your people forth in the power of the Lord. Every evil man, evil woman will fall before you. 
everything coming from Canaan, from the Canaanites will fall before you. And every place you step upon will be yours in Jesus' name. You'll be the hedge and not the tail. A hedge and not beneath. And the Lord will confirm his good promises upon your life. From this moment on, you'll never be the same again. We well, thank you because, Lord, it's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen.